Welcome to the official post-match press conference for the Combank Matildas, who tonight defeated France 1-0 thanks to a goal from Mary Fowler. Tony, can you sum up what this night means to you and to the team? Um, I think I'll, I'll go back a little bit in, in time first, uh, where we started this process and the Federation presented a gap report uh, and what was needed to do with this team. And the last two years of investment, I said in an interview before this game to say this was a night to celebrate, to celebrate what we've done over two years in terms of investment in the women's game, investment in this team with resources, everything from uh, the depth that we needed in the player roster that was presented in that gap report, um, the stats shown that we have had very much problems with top ranked teams and especially European teams. And tonight, I think, represent the final step of that process and, and that journey in preparing for the World Cup. Um, I just looked at some stats here. Uh, if you look at tonight, we had 16 players on the park. Uh, it was nil-nil when our captain, Sam, steps off, Caitlin steps off, uh, our vice captain, um, Steph Catley, uh, steps up. And we can still compete with a top European opposition. And it's thanks to the patience and the belief uh, in the process uh, from everyone. Um, everyone in the FA, all the players uh, that are thrown into deep water when we, when we started this process. Um, so in that sense, it's a night to celebrate that. Um, the other stats that it's, it's very good for us, we have five wins in a row against European oppositions now. Um, four top 10 ranked teams in a row, uh, including three clean sheets against Sweden, England and France. We kept the clean sheet six out of the last eight games. We know we can score against anyone. Um, so that's the positive side and summarize like the journey where we're at. And then, like I said, to the place in the circle, that's the boring coach talking. That doesn't mean anything on the 20th when we're going to play Ireland. Because that's tournament mode, that's something different. This was preparation, time to celebrate, see all the fans, you know, connect and unite a nation going into this World Cup. Uh, but now it's business mode. Now it's time to, to focus on Ireland, do recovery. Um, so that's that boring coach trying to take the temperature down here and be a bit humble because we need to focus on Ireland now. Uh, this was good for the momentum, especially the momentum in the country. Uh, you know, looking at the, the vibe and energy in the stadium now and then thinking about adding another 30,000, it's going to be electric. It's going to be electric in that opening game and, and uh, the players are going to love it. Sorry for a long, long uh, introduction there, but I felt I wanted to summarise the, the two-year process. Anna. Tony, um, it felt like for a long time in that game, um, you were creating chances but didn't have that last bit of, I guess, clinical finish on the final ball. Then, I guess, onto that, how pleased was it to break through the way you did after, I guess, Sam Kerr and Kate McCoy had already left the pitch as well? Yeah. Did you have a microphone in our halftime talk? <laughs> Because that's exactly what we talked about in halftime. We felt it wasn't a nil-nil half. We felt we created enough opportunities into the final third to be up one or two goals. But that final timed pass or run or the final touch wasn't really there. Caitlin had a clear cut chance, could have been a goal. Uh, but th then we got stuck in that little final pass. And then see Rasmus' final pass straight from the training ground. We identify where potentially France could have a little bit of a weakness in the final third. Her, her presence when she's running with that speed to look up and see that Mary is open and then the quality of that pass and Mary's finish is, is obviously something we're very pleased with. But it's also, I'm pleased with the player's patience because sometimes when you miss opportunity like that in the first half, you can start to panic and start to get stressed. But I think the players stuck to the game plan and were more patient. Steph, uh, Tony, you're someone who's kind of been here before, not necessarily with the Matildas, but honestly, I mean, obviously you're familiar with World Cup. Um, you and several of the players now have mentioned staying humble. And I'm just wondering, is there a balance you're trying to find between harnessing the obvious excitement as the host nation and as a result, but also trying not to let people get overwhelmed by the occasion? I, th I think it's, it was a great question. I think it's not letting us get carried away and stay focused on the mission. And, and the process has always been the opening game against Ireland. and and. Yes, we want to take all this in and get motivated and inspired and connect with, with the fans and the nation and feel this momentum because I think that's important to embrace. So I don't want to be boring in that sense because that means a lot to do this together. But it's more the football piece that, yes, we've done all these things and it's going to give us confidence and belief in what we're doing. But then we need to, okay, let's park that now and go back to that game plan and, and staying focused, I guess, is what I'm trying to achieve here. Adam. Tony, are you happy with the balance between creating chances and going forward? Backs going forward, especially Ellie, she loves getting forward, and the other end, 
not exposing yourself to, to, to have chances against you, but that balance, finding that tricky little balance about attacking, but not attacking too much that yeah. it runs in the front yard when you need people in the back yard. Spot on. Uh, one of the things we also spoke about halftime, we showed a couple of clips with Ellie there on the timing of when to release, because Ellie is so good when she's coming from behind and, and that high speed run and the timing of that run, whether it's an underlap or overlap, or running with the ball herself after a given go, for example. But maybe we're in, we're in a little bit of deeper build up when we know France is an extremely good pressing team. And when you play into pressure in the, the center of the pitch, they are flying similar to we do in transition. And we were exposed a couple of times in the first half when we weren't balanced. So it's, you're, you're spot on in terms of knowing when do we release those players. If you've probably seen, not to reveal any of the secrets, we, we build up in a 2-4 shape with, with very narrow build up with short distances to, to not uh, give away too many pressing triggers. And then it's the timing of when we release players. And a couple of times in the first half we got exposed because we released them too early. So that, that's definitely a timing piece, yes. Especially against this top up position that one mistake in your own half or middle third can cost you badly. I haven't had time to talk to her except when she stepped off. We actually we had a break, so when she was on the park, she just wanted to push through, and I said, bigger picture, big, bigger picture, and she said, okay, take me off then, because she wanted to, to stay. Um, so it was me reminding her what this is about. Uh, it's the bigger picture. Um, so if this was a World Cup game, I think she would have kept playing. Hopefully, by taking her off, we saved some recovery time uh, in that um, and rehab time. Um, I hope it's just a knock, so to speak, uh, and nothing that is, is torn or tweaked. And, but I can't, I can't comment on that yet. Um, we spoke a while ago about uh, getting the most out of Sam Kerr collectively, and you were speaking about two forwards and a stand. Now, is there a trade-off involved with isolating Ford and Kerr if you remain two forwards like this with short distances and early pace? Yeah, I, I think don't know how much I want to reveal on that one because that's a very tactical question, but it's all about trying to create the spaces on the field where you want the most spaces for the players that you want to have the ball for. And in terms of Caitlin and Sam, the one thing that they have, which has nothing to do with me as a coach, it has to do with them as a player, is to have, they have extreme understanding of the off-ball movement, how to create space for each other. But in order to do that, you need to give them space to do that, the pull and push or interchange. And, and then you see, saw a couple of sequences today where we draw France midfield out, created a lot of space in front and behind the back line, not to go into too many details, but that's part of what we're trying to do. With respect to Sam, is the preference more the latter within the line? Yeah, but the one thing she has improved a lot is the timing of coming down and bounce and then spinning yeah. behind. Uh, so I think she has developed a game, which is makes her a little bit more difficult to read now. Uh, she's always been good at spinning in on the blind side and getting behind, but now she has a little bit more variation, a little bit more tools in, in her game. And especially with the speed on the wings, sometimes if she draws the center back out, we can also have a wine or a rasa coming in behind. So a little bit more tools around Sam there to, to maybe also free up more space for her in the end. Thanks very much, Davis. Uh, just on the defense, how is Alana Kennedy, your views on Claire Hunt's performance? And what are you thinking with central defense going I have a lot of starting centre backs. They give me a headache now. <laughs> uh, I have to say, I'm, I'm um, impressed of uh, Alana's ability to come back from such a long absence from the game, play France, which is a world, world class, world class opposition in terms of their attacking tools. Uh, we always know that Alana's been good on the ball, always. She was brilliant on the ball tonight as well. But in terms of her defending, uh, they asked a lot of questions on the back line tonight. And she's been training very good over a month with us now, which I think have helped. Uh, we need to remember that this is the first game ever that Alana and Claire plays together. Did not play one single minute together. Um, and it takes bravery, uh, confidence, but also tactically understanding to, to be synchronized in the back line. Um, when it comes to Claire, I think Previous games we've seen her, she's been brilliant on the ball. I think she struggled a little bit in the first half on the ball tonight, whether it was the occasion or France pressing, but then she picked it up in the in the second half, grow into the game. And then being able, when Alana had a little bit of, if, if you know, we, we wanted to limit minutes for Alana to not risk her getting injured, be able to, to put the pokes in feels really good in terms of building depth to have multiple centre backs. And then Ivy Loic, I don't know how much you watched her in Sweden, but she's been phenomenal every single week. She's playing 90 minutes every week in the top team in Sweden and Hecken, and is, is in the life, you know, form of her life. So to be able to bring her in as well, you see four centre backs out there to, today, which was, I was happy to be able to do that.
and also gives us some tactical flexibility. You saw we did some formation change again. Oh, we hope she's okay. Yes, she had a little bit of a niggle, but I hope it's it's just a niggle. Thanks, Mark. And then we'll final three will be Sam and then Anna. Just going to say, Mackenzie Allen, number one. I mean, performance again tonight. But she didn't have a lot to do, but she was very assured, very confident. Um, made things look easy. I love it. Yeah. I'll ask the expert. No, but they, I, I, it is a bigger picture with Maka. I just want to say that. Maka represents a lot of what this team represents. She has had a tough journey to where she is right now. You know, she, she performed the way she does now for the national team, for the club, in a long, long time. Didn't get the opportunity. When she got the opportunity, she wasn't really mentally ready to grab it. She, that's her own words. And then how she's come in now and grabbed it from that Tournament of Nation and, and the maturity she plays with, the confidence she plays with, just the presence. You can see the body language. and. The way, the one thing that, and you know all about this, the one thing that's very important for a goalkeeper in a tournament mode is to control the momentum. Know when to go quick, know when to slow down, know when to go long, know when to play out. And that decision making, I think she proved a lot of maturity in tonight's game with that decision making. Sam. Tony, you mentioned that this game was a celebration, a culmination almost of the past two years of Hollow Is there a particular moment that stands out to you from this game that encapsulates all of that? And partly to that, what can this team do now that they weren't able to do when we started? Oh, big questions. Uh, there were a lot of moments tonight, but obviously it's, it's amazing to see how the team comes together uh, when it's 16 players playing and how, I don't know what, when it was breaks and they come from water, if identify how they coach each other. You even have, you know, centre backs coaching centre backs from the sideline. The players are coaching each other. You have, you know, when when Mary scores, you see Sam and Kate are the first one screaming the loudest. Like how they are happy for each other, no matter if they're on the bench or on the field. That that unity and that chemistry, how they they play for each other and, and support each other is is amazing. Um, the other thing that is special tonight, I think, is talking about the, the two years journey. It's not just about football. It's so much more. I've said that from day one. This is the, tonight was much more than ninety-minute football. It was breaking a record in the stands. See the amazing, you know, the Matildas, how they unite and inspire a nation here, and you know, for football in general. So it, that was a special moment for me tonight. What they can do tonight now that they couldn't do before, I think I'm the wrong person to answer that. It feels wrong for me to sit here and say what, what we've done better now than, than before. Um, what I had said before in, in one of the talks we had is I've invested a lot of times on game management, you know, knowing how to play games, knowing when they've had this high level, but then maybe knowing when in the game to do what. When do we need to wait for that next pressing trigger? When do we play out? When do we, like that tactical understanding. And I think they, they showed a lot of moments today. We had almost four different formation and four different strategies during the game and they just did it. Like, and everyone was on the same page. And, and that, you know, whether we do that better now than before, but we have invested a lot in that. Final question to Anna Harrington. Tony's just checking out. I think she looks too phased, but Sam is always out. She's just sort of camera pan. Yeah, we, she is one of those that we really wanted to manage minutes on as well. We have, um, we have trained hard to be, be prepared physically because the players that came from England, for example, haven't played a game for a long time, so, so we trained them hard. And some of the players were we meant to play. We played, not to reveal too much, but in a close to a game a, a week ago, we played 90 minutes for the ones that needed 90 minutes. And then we knew we played maybe 60 today to make sure we had the prioritization plan to, to fly against Ireland. It's all about Ireland. We knew that was risky with tonight's game to do that, uh, but we trust the depth in the in the roster to, to do it. So Sam was a pre-planned sub. We talked to her in halftime if, if she was ready to pull out, but she said another 10, 15 would be good for her uh, physically for, for the Island game, so. Is it that thing that she's managing? Is there I leave that to the medical team to come in. <laughs> <laughs> and that ends the press conference. Thanks everyone. Um,